Hi everyone, Elliot Jacobson here for Disaster Diaries. And this is a special Disaster Diary edition because I am going through Sam Mitchell withdrawal syndrome. Sam Mitchell has the YouTube channel Collapse Chronicles and someone he knows very well has a separate channel called the Humpty Dumpty Tribe. Um, neither of which have been posting videos of late. He typically reads posts um, a great eye for the story of the day to choose from. And these are stories that he will, uh, he just reads the text pretty much straight out with a little bit of commentary. And uh, I went looking for some stories right now to sort of duplicate what Sam does in honor of him being in absentia. And, uh, well, you know, I could talk about um, the heat waves in India or read you something from Umer. Um, there's plenty of great essays around, but um, being a complete egocentric uh, sort of fellow, I just figured I would read my own post from today. <laughs> Unless I pretend this is from Sam. All right. So this one is called The Three Freedoms. Yesterday, April 22nd, was Earth Day. Curious fact, the letters in Earth Day can be arranged to spell death ray. So aside, they can also spell hydrate. I actually went and looked that up. So hydrate is a single word from Earth Day. Um, yeah, we could certainly use a little more water here in California. And isn't that what the day is really all about? Solar radiation pummeling the planet with death rays, scorching every rock, tree, and blade of grass. An energy imbalance caused by an abundance of gases that don't allow those death rays to easily escape back into space. Gases caused by a species that has exploded in size, convenience, and wealth by exploiting millions of years of energy-rich sequestered carbon. But beyond the escalating damage from these death rays and gases, there is a more insidious heat melting society, a political and social mindset that is raging hot. We are beset on all sides by media selling war, death, political intrigue, celebrities, sex, and doom. Turn on TV news. And there's a pundit explaining why a politician is corrupt or a political position is stupid. Check your social media and find a timeline filled with censored purpose. Read your favorite news website and find stories streamlined to raise your blood pressure and shorten your life. Outrage and blame glue our attention so we'll hang around long enough to be hit by another ad customized by cookies and demographics for an audience of one. Cheers, everyone. Yeah, it's just straight whiskey and Coke. I mean, it's what I've been drinking for most of my adult life. We live on a remarkable planet at a particularly troubled time in history. These are the days where everyone is wrong and every idea is stupid. We don't even know the questions, but we're barraged by answers and solutions. And it's always them, the other, who are the obstacle to change. One side blames banks and fossil fuel companies, corporations, and capitalism. The other side blames immigrants, taxes, socialism, and government overreach. The list of blame is longer, of course. For example, the climate activists led by Michael Mann are blaming doomers, referring to them as unwitting tools of the fossil fuel industry. In the past few days, I've been called a shill for the fossil fuel industry several times on Twitter. Owing to the precision of its repetition, this is apparently the precise language that must be hurled to gain status among the climate activist peers as the requisite insult of the doomers position. So it goes. The rush to blame raises interesting questions. What exactly is blame? And what is it good for? 
The following are three facets of blame. Blame is an expression of anger born out of feelings of helplessness. It is part of the climate grieving process to try and find some entity to hold responsible for the unimaginable crises that are unfolding daily. Blame is a way to position ourselves as victims, to give up our power and agency. It's a way to feel better about ourselves and our own lack of action and ambition. Blame is a form of corporate and political manipulation to keep us engaged in unnecessary battles while being groomed to a particular first world lifestyle with its associated stuff to buy. So here's a thought. Maybe no one is to blame. Maybe we aren't victims. Maybe this climate and societal chaos was always going to happen, the inevitable result of an intelligent but fallible species meeting an extremely potent energy source at a time when its technology created the potential for exponential growth. In short, we're living in an era of overshoot. You should read that book, Overshoot. And Sam um, has a great uh, interview with William Reese. Maybe check that out on YouTube. It really explains the principles pretty clearly of where we are. So societies and civilizations have risen and died many times in the long, sad history of humans on this planet. A truth about every one of these civilizations is that they did their best to survive. And they did so until the circumstances of the world around them made survival no longer possible. And that's where we are now on a planetary scale. In the face of accelerating disasters and planetary tragedy, it's worth recalling one resource that will always remain in abundance for humans to tap. As Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp survivor Viktor Frankl said in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, everything can be taken from a person, but the last of human freedoms. The freedom to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. So, I mean, this is important, right? You can, you can chain me, you can torture me, you can put me in solitary, you can threat me, threaten me with, you're going to burn me or poison me, mass extinction like they're doing to the Jews in the concentration camps. But you can't change my attitude, what's up here, right? I mean, brilliant, brilliant and important critical thought right now. I suggest that as doomers we choose to respond to the collapse of the environment and global industrial civilization by centering our lives around these three freedoms. We have the freedom to serve, to find ways to be of service in our local communities and worldwide that support the environment, further causes we believe in, and help ease suffering. We have the freedom to be kind, to do little things to help others, which include kindness to non-humans and the environment. And we have, to the best of our ability, the freedom to be generous, to give from whatever abundance we have to those more in need. So I'm often asked on Twitter after I make some sort of inflammatory post, well, what's your solution, doctor? You know, what would you do, prof? And that's the answer, right? The answer is not that we're going to fix this or somehow escape doom or um, you know, mitigate enough uh, GHGs that some sort of semblance of civilization will survive uh, collapse. None of that is going to happen. But what we can do every single day is be of service, be kind, and be generous. And if you find that um, 
as something you could hold on to, then then that's positive, right? That's a that's an activist perspective. As a doomer, you are not sitting back and just watching collapse happen. You are actively engaged on a day to day basis with every single thing you can do, right? To to essentially help this transition um, be as uh, I don't know ease the suffering of it. So think of this sort of like a, a death doula, right? As uh, it is, um, we're in the midst of a civilization that is dying and a planet that is dying. And we're going to hold the hand of the planet and hold the hand of the people that are suffering and do everything we can on our way out. I can't think of anything else to do with my life that would be more important. By releasing ourselves from the prison of blame, we feel empowered, no longer a victim of their evils, nor subject to corporate, media, or political manipulation. Being a doomer is being free. By the way, the concept of the three freedoms originates with Franklin D. Roosevelt's famous four freedoms. However, FDR's freedoms presuppose a habitable planet and a functioning civilization, which are quickly becoming luxuries of the past. For the record, here are FDR's four freedoms. Freedom of speech, freedom of worship, choose which invisible friend you want to um, talk with, I guess. Freedom from want, in collapse, we will be wanting so many things. Food, water, a place to live, any sort of companionship at all. Um, freedom from fear, that one's out the window. We're going to live with our fears every day going forward. Fear of a fire or a tornado or a hurricane or other natural disaster. Fear of someone... Um, directly stealing and taking from us if we are one of the people who have prepared in advance. Um, fear of the breakdown of civilization and society and the simple things like sanitation and a, a water faucet that works and on and on with the fears. So FDR's four, four freedoms are gone. I mean, they're just gone, right? Well, freedom of speech, for the time being, we have a little bit of that, even as YouTube and Facebook and other organizations uh, crack down on censorship, whether it's Florida with their anti, uh, you can't say gay law um, sort of thing, or the various books that are being outlawed um, from our libraries and our schools. So yeah, um, freedom of speech is also well under attack. Out of those four freedoms, the freedom of worship is the one freedom that people will always have till the last day because you can't keep people from talking to their delusional inner voice and picturing some sort of um, critter that somehow cares about them. I, just, I don't understand it in the least how these... Well, a friend of mine said um, just recently... If um, one person um, thinks they're talking to an invisible entity, it's called a delusion. If a small group of people think they're talking to some invisible entity, it's called a cult. But if a large number of people think they're talking to an invisible entity, it's called a religion. Just keep that in mind when you spend your time talking to your entity. We are nearing the time of bottleneck, the phase and overshoot when the population starts to decrease as we shoot past the limits the planet can support. The hard part of collapse is just beginning. In the next few months, in 2022, if you need a timestamp, are going to see some of the worst fires, heat waves, and storms in the history of the planet as the northern hemisphere enters its summer season. The Arctic may set a new record low in sea ice extent. 
Methane and CO2 record high levels will continue to sizzle us. And in the middle of all of this, the toxic U.S. political season will be in full bloom. These are days filled with great sadness, but harder times are ahead. Hang on to your freedoms, friends. You're going to need them. All right, everyone, that was my reading of this post I made today, and I am doing this in honor of Sam Mitchell and hoping he returns to the YouTube airwaves soon. So I'll see you all later.